bad this is Tommaso Zilli and this is for guitar.com and today we're gonna talk about dynamics and how to control your dynamics on guitar. Now, dynamics is one of, how can I say, the most important elements of guitar tone actually because when, whenever you hear somebody having a good tone a lot of the time what you're hearing, hearing is not his gear or other things is how much they control the dynamic and are able to accent the note they want to accent and play quietly the note they want to play quietly and so on and so forth. So, we're going to do some basic, basic, basic exercises on how to control the dynamic. First thing is our terminology here, our how do we going to describe that. I suggest you start dividing the dynamics in two levels. I know there are more levels than two, but it's good to start with two which are just simply forte and piano. Forte means strong in Italian, and piano means quiet in Italian. So it's very simple, you can play loud or quiet, okay? Nothing in between, just imagine it's either loud or quiet. That's enough to control your dynamics, as you see. So, you're gonna play a simple scale. I don't want to make this complex, and you can, you can play it on any lick, you can play it on any arpeggio, not a problem. Let's take a very simple scale. Let's take the usual A minor pentatonic. Why? Because it's the first scale you learn on guitar usually. So, and I don't want to make anything complex. This can be done by anybody at any level. So, you can play... Oh, and by the way, you want to do this exercise with a fairly clean sound. This way you can hear if you're playing quietly, or... Or not. So if you're playing piano, or if you're playing forte. Okay? So, first exercise, just play the scale piano or play the scale forte. Play the scale piano. Play the scale forte. Very, very simple. You just want to distinguish very sharply between those two things. Piano is piano. Forte is forte. Okay, that's the first exercise. The second exercise, by, by the way, I know the first exercise sounds stupid. Do it anyway, trust me here. If you don't do the stupid exercise first, the next ones are going to be harder to do. So the second exercise is to change your dynamic. There are two ways to change your dynamic. You can change it uh, gradually, or you can change it suddenly. So, let's change it suddenly. We're gonna play the first... We're gonna play the first three strings, forte, and the next three strings, piano. So... Okay? I can do the opposite. I can start piano and then play forte. Like every exercise, start slow and then gradually work your way up to higher speed. Okay? So, this is a sudden change. When I get at the third string, then suddenly the last note here is a piano, the first note here it's a forte. Okay, no transition. I can make it more interesting by changing the dynamic more than once during the same scale. So I can play the first two-string piano, the next two-string forte, and the, ne and the last two-string piano. Now attention to not confuse dynamic with speed. I'm not speeding up when I'm playing forte, I'm just playing louder. So, I take it very slowly, piano, forte, piano, piano, forte, Okay? Don't do this. That's speeding up. You don't want to do this. You see that some of you will do it naturally when it's 40, you want to speed up because, I mean, it's more intense. But you want to keep the speed the same. That's important to work with a metronome if you have to. Again, as usual, work your way up in speed. I can play um, odd strings, so 1, 3, and 5 piano, and even string 2, 4, and 6 forte. opposite then. 
or actually you can start. Any scheme is fine. Or the first string on a the first note on a string for the next string piano. Or the opposite, piano then forte. Or I can play forte every three notes. Right? Okay? Very, very simple. So far we did this kind of thing that uh, dynamic changes suddenly. We can make dynamic change smoothly from piano to forte, from forte to piano. How do we do that? We just do it. Going in, in jargon, we say crescendo, meaning growing up. Yeah, no? And then progressively fourth. Okay? Okay? Or you can do the opposite, you can do a decrescendo, meaning starting from fourth and going to piano. Okay? That's the idea. And you try to make it as smooth as possible, okay? Now, of course, there are only so many dynamic levels, it's quite hard to make a perfectly smooth curve, but you want to strive for that. In reality, once you master two dynamic levels, forte and piano, and you can clearly distinguish if every note is played forte or piano, that's already more than enough. It's already more than what guitar, the most guitar players uh, can do, because most guitar players have just a single level, which is some, somewhere in, in between, and they play everything at that level, which honestly sucks a bit, because then their solos, their lead, their playing in general sound flat. So you want to learn to be able to accent those notes, and this kind of dynamic control is the way to do it. Now, you can invent any kind of scheme here. You can go uh, crescendo until halfway through the scale and then decrescendo gra gradually. Okay? Or the opposite. Or you can decide to accent a note every three, or a note every four, or a note every five or not one and one, three on a sequence of five, so one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so, or actually better, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, okay, so not one and three in a sequence of five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, okay, any kind of those brainy scheme for accenting notes, and you can do this on a scale, an arpeggio, anything you want. The important point is that you get used to it. It's not hard to do it. If you are focusing on dynamic, it's really actually simple because, I mean, you're only picking harder or quieter, okay? The problem is doing it when you are focusing on a number of other things like on what chord are we, where is the right scale I have to play, uh, am, I in, uh, am I playing in the right time, or my, if my timing is correct, my intonation is correct, my bands are in tune, etc, 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 and then improvising and trying to make music. At this point it's hard to focus on dynamic. So by doing those exercises that seem again quite, maybe too simple, but by doing them daily for a while, you are programming into your hand this kind of uh, control routines for the dynamics so that later your brain automatically will uh, use them when you are playing and uh, you will gain in dynamic range in your solos. Now, a final word of advice here. Again, this, to, to train these, use a clean sound because with a, with a clean sound you can hear the dynamic goes up or not, if it's forte or if it's piano. That doesn't mean that distorted is bad per se. Even if you have some distortion, okay, you will hear if a note is forte or piano. You will not hear a change in volume, usually. You will hear a change in tone. So, that's distorted. 
piano and has distorted forte. Okay, and you can hear there's more distortion when I play forte because my signal is bigger. I mean, and then there's more distortion in the amp. So, and again, same thing as before, like playing dynamic, uh, accenting every third note. And exaggerate it, okay? I mean, I, I would not play with that much uh, emphasis usually, but... Exaggerate the difference, okay? So that when is the time to do it in real life, you have enough dynamic range in your hand to cover the basics, to cover what you want to express. So, again, when you, when you make it an exercise, exaggerate the difference. Accent really strongly and play the rest really quietly. I mean, unrealistically so, okay? Because this way, by making the gesture as large as you can, you gain as much dynamic range. It's much easier later to make use less dynamic range. It's harder to expand it, so make it as large as you can. Okay, make the forte really forte, make the piano really piano. Again, very simple exercises, but if you practice them daily, you will hear the difference in your playing, you will hear the difference in your tone, and you will discover that maybe you're using too much distortion, or maybe you're using um, too much volume, etc., to get the tone you want. Once you learn to pick this way, you'll find that it's easier to get the tone you want every single time. I see this every day in my students. I teach them to pick this way and after a while they're like, my tone is much better and I also need less distortion. It's in your pick. I mean, I'm not saying all, your, all the tone is in your hand, because, I mean, what you're playing into, of course, I mean, it's important, but a good component of tone is having master of mastery of dynamics. So, Simple exercises, practice them daily, and until next time, enjoy.